everyone, it's Nikki. I'm here to do a retake on my review over the birth control Nexaplon. After watching my first one, I realized I just didn't really inform y'all very well. Um, it just wasn't a very good review. Um, so I decided to write down a few questions that are commonly asked and to answer them for y'all. Um, first off, a lot of people want to know how is it inserted in, into your arm. Uh, first, the doctors will ask uh, which hand you write with, your right or your left, and they'll put it in your non-writing hand. So they put it in my left arm, and they put it up here, kind of like underneath. So whenever you lay down on the table, they'll have you put your arm like this so that this is exposed, and they will give you a shot of numbing medication first and that part is probably the only part that hurts um, it's not really a hurt it's more of a discomfort um, kind of like when you really get any kind of shot you know it's like the needle goes in doesn't really hurt and they inject the medicine it's kind of like ow 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 that doesn't feel very good and then they slip it on in um, you can actually see the scar from where they inserted it at in my in my arm now um, and then you're pretty much you're done and of course for a while the numbing agency keeps working so at first you're like oh this doesn't hurt it's okay but once that numbing medicine wears off I strongly urge you to have some kind of painkiller around um, like ibuprofen or Tylenol whichever works best for you um, just to help because it is gonna it's gonna hurt especially that first week um, the first week after uh, it's been inserted is probably the most uncomfortable week. Um, <laughs> uh, it, for me, it bruised up pretty good. Um, I have pictures actually um, that I took of my arm. It bruised up pretty good. And the area was very tender to the touch. It hurt for me to apply any kind of pressure. Sorry, hold on. Sorry. Um, and I just didn't even want to use my left arm for anything, which kind of sucks because even though I'm right hand dominant, I am a mom and housewife and I do stuff with both of my hands. So I discovered really quickly just how much I use both of my arms and hands. <laughs> um, so it was a challenge because every time I would be feeding my youngest, um, you know, I usually would put her, hold her in this arm and it hurt. It just, it hurt. <laughs> um, and also something I noticed was if I was laying in bed, talking to my boyfriend, usually I would like to lay in bed and, you know, prop my elbow on the bed and lay my head on my hand. Well, I couldn't do that with my left arm, like any kind of like just pressure, muscle pressure or anything around that area. It hurt, <laughs> which sucked. It really did. That actually went on for about two weeks that I couldn't really do anything to like that meant tensing up my muscles around that area and putting pressure on it. Um, a lot of people uh, ask how effective is the Nexapon. Um, sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze. Um, according to studies, it is 99% effective, but just like any birth control out there, it is not 100% effective. There's, it still could fudge up. Um, but it is on the higher level than, you know, the pill, um, and I think even condoms. Um, really, the only form of birth control that is 100% effective is no sex at all. But if you are still paranoid about getting pregnant, then double up on protection. Um, you know, use condoms, uh, spermicide. You know something like that and uh and when i say double up on protection don't like also go 
and get on the pill or something and be taking the pill and have this in your arm because that would just hurt you more than anything. That would just mess you up. I don't even know why some people would do that, but you never know. People are made to be in this world. Um, so, but it is pretty, pretty effective. Um, for me, you know, um, so far nothing. Um, I've only had it in for, oh my gosh, um, almost two months now, maybe, no, maybe like a month and a half, a month and a half sounds about right. Um, Um, another question that a lot of people ask is, well, how long do you have to wait until you can have unprotected sex? What doctors prefer to do um, is to have it inserted on like your second or third day of your menstrual cycle that you have. That way it's inserted and by the time you're off your period, you can have sex again because a lot of people just don't have sex on the period anyway. Now, I know there are people out there who do, but I'm just saying, you know, second, third day of your menstrual cycle, after it's over in another three or four days, you're pretty much ready to go. Now, if you have it inserted when you're not on your menstrual cycle, um, they'll want you to make sure that you're not pregnant uh, they may ask you to do a quick pregnancy test um, because they really stress about not being pregnant when they insert it because it has been known to have effects on the unborn child um, and can harm them very, very badly, which is also why they stress that if you do become pregnant while you have the Nexapron, to immediately go to the doctor and have it taken out. Um, but anyway, if you if you have it inserted when you're not on your menstrual cycle, they will tell you you need to wait at least a week before having unprotected sex. So seven days. Um, and you know, please wait, just to be on the safe side. Um, which I have to say is a lot better than with the pill because with the pill it takes a whole three months <laughs> for you to have unprotected sex. That sucks, but um, another question people ask is about how are the periods when they're when you're on the next plot. Um, I actually just recently went through my first period while while on this. It was a little long. It was probably about six days. Um, but there was hardly any bleeding at all. Hardly at all. Um, it was just kind of more annoying that it lasted for so long than anything. Um, and there is a chance that periods may stop completely. All right, hold on. Um, there is a chance that your periods will completely stop. So if you are one of those women who prefers to have their period, like just has to have it, then this may not be the best birth control for you to get. Um, me, I am one of those women who prefers to have her period, but due to my health situation, um, being I have high blood pressure, so there's only certain birth controls that I could do, and this was one of them, the one that I was most comfortable with doing. Um, so I really didn't have a choice. Honestly, if you're one of those women who prefers to have your period each month, then you are better off going with the pill or just condoms because really any of the other birth controls out there there's that chance of your period stopping and you not having one um, something else uh, okay next we're going to go on to side effects um, each person is different 
not everyone will experience the same side effects. Some people may experience it worse than others. Um, for me, there has been some discomfort and some side effects. The first side effect that I automatically noticed was soreness and tenderness in my breast, which I actually am still experiencing. I've noticed that it's not every day, but it's pretty much every day. And it usually happens, I've noticed, in the evening and at night when I'm about to go to bed. Some days they hurt more than others. The discomfort feeling is close to like when you're pregnant and during that first trimester your boobs get all sore and tender. It's kind of what it feels like. So a lot of women, when they experience that, they freak out and think, oh no, I'm pregnant again. No, that's... It's a very common side effect, actually, and it's normal. And hopefully within maybe another few weeks or a month or two, it'll kind of level out and stop. That would be awesome because I honestly kind of hate this. But compared to some other side effects, I, I take this over anything else probably any day. Um, Another common side effect that I have experienced is the headaches. Now, I'm not having them every day. And honestly, I can't even say if my headaches are just because of the Nexaplon. Because I'm actually going through an extremely stressful time right now in my life. And I've always been that type of person to where when I'm stressed, I get stress headaches and sometimes migraines. Um, so I, I really can't even tell you 100% for sure if it's just the Nexaplon's fault or if it's kind of a combination of both my stress in my life and because of the medicine. Um, but like I said, it hasn't been every day. Actually, I didn't experience my first really bad headache until about five days before my period started, which even before I was on the birth control, that was a common thing for me was to get some headaches before my period started and to have headaches while on my period. Now I did notice that they were definitely more intense and were not just headaches, but actually eventually turned into migraines. Um, but once I took some Excedrin, they went away. Usually there was only, I think like twice that they didn't go away. And I actually ended up having a migraine for three days straight, which is extremely discomforting and is hard when you are a mom trying to take care of your kids and every time your child is crying just because they're hungry or need something your head is just like oh stop yeah it takes a lot of patience to deal with the migraine and having your kids around um, another side effect that Again, I'm not 100% sure if it's due to the birth control or if it's because of stress in my life. Is I've actually been losing a lot of hair in the shower. Um, which I didn't see that on the list of side effects in the pamphlet or on their website of hair loss. Um, so that actually might just be due to me being stressful. But it also could be because of the medicine too. I actually had a friend who, uh, while she was on the depot shot, she actually experienced a lot of hair loss and she used to have a thick head of hair and then after like two years of being on the depot, she had such thin hair and was embarrassed about it. So, uh, you never know. <laughs> um, Oh, there was another side effect um, that I was thinking about. Um, oh, crap. Um, oh, now I remember. Um, during the first few weeks of having it, I did, um, ended up having flu-like symptoms, which is a, which is a side effect. Um, I felt, my body felt crappy. Um, 
I ended up running like a little, like, nine, I really can't even call it a fever. It was like 99.8 fever. You know, it's just like my body temperature was just a little bit rise, um, raised, I mean. Um, my throat got sore and itchy. Um, you know, it, it lasted about two weeks or so. Um, it's, I just felt like crap. Um, and I actually didn't know that that was a side effect until I had to go on their website and read it. And I said, oh, that's nice to know. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you feel like you kind of are, like you're, like you're trying to get the flu after you just get it, um, don't panic. Apparently it's a side effect, so. Um, now all of these side effects that I have been experiencing are not that bad to me. Um, I'm waiting to see if they get better or it, or get worse. Um, I'm really hoping that the headaches don't get worse because I've actually read on a lot of people's reviews that that's like their main reason on why they had it removed was because they would have such horrible headaches that they just couldn't stand it anymore. Um, which I don't blame them. If I if if later on down the road I start getting headaches every day. Yeah, I'm, I will have it taken out because I don't want to deal with a headache every day. But hopefully, knock on wood, it doesn't. I'm hoping that it continues to, to just not really bother me so much. Um, oh, there was another side effect that a lot of people um, had asked about was the sex drive. Um, I have noticed that I have not been as randy <laughs> as I normally would be. I wouldn't say that my sex drive is completely dead, um, but again, I'm going through a very stressful point in my life right now um, with money, and that alone kills my sex drive. It's like the last thing on my mind. Same thing with my boyfriend. We both kind of had low sex drives lately because of that. So, I really don't know if it's the Nexaplon or if it's just because of my stressful situation right now. Um, but I have noticed that when we have gone to be intimate, it's taken me a little longer to get into it. Um, and even my boyfriend noticed one time, he asked me, he was like, what's wrong? It doesn't seem like you're really into it right now. You know, I thought I thought you wanted to, and and I'm like I do, but I'm having an issue like getting horny, and I said in, in, in a male's version, I'm having an issue getting an erection, <laughs> pretty much. And I said, and I don't know if it's because of this birth control or not. And you know, it just it kind of sucked. Um, I so. Yeah, I, that would be something else I would kind of look out for. I hope that also kind of goes away because I don't like having an issue getting excited. Um, and I used to be someone, you know, you barely touch me, I'd be like, woo! And now I'm just kind of like, eh, you got to work at it. You know, it's, it kind of, it sucks really bad, actually. I'm not used to that. Um... But like I said, I've only had it in for like a month and a half. It's still too early to decide if I'm going to have it removed or not. Anyway, I hope this video has been a lot more helpful than my other one. If there are any other questions you have, please feel free to comment below. And I will answer them for you the best I can or send you websites. And I want y'all to have a wonderful and blessed day.